day all, I wrap Sina Flynn Associates with your agriculture update and this is for Tuesday and we are now at the 17th of September 2019 and just approaching 120 in the afternoon. So you're pretty much looking at where the grains are going to close. No surprise here if we saw yesterday's crop conditions report they were certainly showing crops that weren't under a lot of stress. They might be behind but as you can see across the board still somewhat lower. We're looking at a pullback today also if you take a look in the uh, energy market as Saudi Arabia is saying, I don't know how much reality there is, that uh, probably out of half of what got knocked out yesterday, half will be up very quickly and then they have the remaining portion to go. So that is good news again. I only mention that because everything affects ethanol and where we're at and the president has come up with a program for ethanol and I wrote about that this morning for my uh, traders so that they could see what at least the proposal is. Stock market pretty much unchanged today. You know we have the FOMC meeting announcement tomorrow, so that'll be important as well. Excuse me. Let's take a look, if we could, at the weekly area chart of closes. And as you can see for the week, we're up nine and a half cents. So the market's acting actually nine and three quarters right now, coming into this old resistance area towards the $9 mark. When we come and look at the daily bar chart, we had a wedge formation here. The market had a downtrend line when it got over it. As you can see, the market spiked to the upside. Now we're getting something of a pullback, down five cents this week so far, but not in anywhere near taking out this 864 at this point in time. So the trend is defined by the swing line, still has a pattern of higher lows and higher highs. And all a swing line does is it looks at the previous session, if it's gotten lower and low, draws the line to the downside, inside day it draws it another way, a higher high day, outside days up, outside days down. I teach it all in my charting course. Where I look for the first support to come in potentially is the 100 day average of closes. Now admittedly, if you take a look, the market when it went up, sliced right through that like butter and didn't even come back to it. And that's why I say on the way down, we're gonna see does it act if it corrects further that that is the support zone. I would expect regardless for the 18 day average if attack to be a support zone because when the market first got to it, it played with it a little bit and then decided to move higher. In terms of resistance, this all fits in. I wanna take you to yesterday. You had three days up in a row over the upper Bollinger Band. The odds of staying over a Bollinger Band, it occurs 5% of the time. I developed a rule of thumb that said, each consecutive day over takes away one of those five percentage points. Now what happens on day six? It just means the market's stronger. What it really comes down to is let's assume that you really want to be a buyer of this market and you're saying, well, should I get in here or not? The odds favor you're going to be able to come in under the Bollinger Band. Now, whether that is a lower number than where you're at right now, I can't answer, but I can tell you that the odds favor it's going to be under that, and that's what went on, and today you're five cents lower. When we take a look at momentum, you're overbought. So here's what we have. We have a market that broke out of sideways action to the upside, had a nice run on that, now it's starting to pull back, and the question is, where's the support coming in, and you're overbought. In the meal market, you have a market that stayed in the sideways Bollinger Bands, went up, challenged the upper band. Now, one of the things I tell you, and it could have been in the beans too, I think the first challenge on the upside or downside of a Bollinger Band is often where professional traders step back from the market. They're waiting to see, well, first of all, I think they take some money off the table because often you get a reaction from it, and that's exactly what we're getting right now. The close today is going to be right over the 18-day average, so the bulls still have control. You have a pattern of higher lows, you have higher highs, the settlement is over the 18-day average, which I define, that helps me to define bias. If you close over the 18-day average, I say the bias is up, under it the bias is down. And momentum, which had been pointing up, is flattened out. And we can see that pretty much in the price action. The soy oil 
finish down 24 points, but it was over the upper Bollinger Band. Yesterday, if we look, this market was sharply higher at 3028, way up here. So that's two days over the band. Let me come back to that. And this day you were over it. So you have three days in a row over the band. I'll repeat it. 2% chance tomorrow that the market will settle over that band. 98% chance it won't. Does it mean you have to crash? It's not what it's saying. It says that if, if one wanted into the market, you should be able to do better than where that band is. That's how I utilize it. On the way up, I still say pros took some money off the table there. In the corn market, couldn't quite get to that upper Bollinger Band, started getting into overbought territory. I teach that overbought territory on slow stochastics starts at a 70 level, not an 80 that is the traditional level. I found this to be a better reading of it. And as you can see, the market's backing off. Now with both numbers under 70, you're no longer in what? You're no longer overbought. So I'd be surprised if support doesn't show at the 365 level. The bulls throw this whole pattern where they're trying to build something of a base here. If you take out 353 and a quarter, and should the market close over 376, that'd be an interesting move because you'd be back to overbought. So you're right in an area of, of no man's land, so to speak. In the wheat market, you got up just the other day to the upper Bollinger Band, followed through and you're backing off. You have a market that is overbought in an uptrend, has hit its upside target and backing off. In the sugar market, if you take out 1068, this whole attempt at a rally here is a failure. And what the market literally has to do shortly is not only take, not take this out, has to close back over the 18-day average if it's going to be bullish. This action is very different than we saw in coffee, where the coffee market, when it first broke out, it stayed over that number, continued up, got itself overbought, and now we're starting to get into the correction phase of that where momentum has been lost on the upside. It might be headed back to the 18-day average to decide what to do, but unless you take out these, this whole low area here, the market acts like a market that simply ran into resistance after a breakout and wants to back off. In the cocoa market, I've said yesterday and I'm saying it again, this was yesterday, 100-day average upper Bollinger Band. This is your resistance point. You embedded the slow stochastic. You're staying over the upper Bollinger Band today. I would expect pullbacks in the market, but I'd expect them to be well supported as long as the red line, the K line on the slow stochastic stays over 80. We'll see if that occurs. In the cotton market, you had, again, one day, two days, three days, up and over the upper Bollinger Band. Gives you a 2% chance today of staying over it, and you can see it's backing down. It did not change its trend. The trend is still higher lows, higher highs, but it's an overbought market. Momentum starting to turn down. Momentum often leads price, and that means you might be headed back to that 18-day average. Resistance, if I'm wrong, should be up at that upper Bollinger Band area, and if you slice through this high, well, then I'd look for the 100-day average. So you have all your game plans, at least. In the cattle, this is an important day. You have higher lows, higher highs, and outside day up. Until today's low is taken out, since it's an outside day up, I think the bulls grabbed control. They've got the bias up, momentum up, support 18-day average, take out this low, and you throw out this uh, attempt at making something of a bottom. Feeder cattle, a good move today too. First move over the upper Bollinger Band overbought. I question if some of this wasn't the fact that the US and China have agreed on agriculture terms for a trade deal and beef, as I understand it at least, is part of that and the market got a push on that. As for the pork and bean trade, which is the uh, hog trade, limit down in hogs. But understand, hogs had a phenomenal run to the upside. This market ran once they, there was word that the U.S. and China were talking pork and beans and China was going to buy. 57.75 low, and the market goes up. And let me just show you, it gets up to this day, 71.60, and now you're getting a, a, the correction starting to set in. That's a 14 cent rally. If you've traded hogs, that's a monster rally. So now you're getting the consolidation. And by the way, on Thursday, the lower deputies of the U.S. and Chinese uh, trade delegations get together to set the agenda 
for the big boys when, they, when China comes in town and they meet our, our staffs. Guide to technical indicators. You watch me and you might be interested in learning more about these indicators. So we have for you volumes one and two of Guide to Technical Indicators. And it talks trend lines, GAN numbers, Elliott, stochastics, MACD, market sentiment indicators. There's just so many different things that it does and they're done in a way where you can see they're easy to read, the graphs are right there. It's great primers on these subjects. If you'd like to get a free copy, we send them via a PDF file to you. All you need to do is go to our website, www.irapstein.com. You'll see free offers. Click on it. You'll be able to get there. And if you're looking up here on an icon, if you see me on YouTube, click that icon. It'll take you right to that page as well. I'm Irapstein. You have a good day. I'll talk to you tomorrow.